Okay, good morning, everybody. <laughs> it is October 23rd. And um, I'm currently out doing a small section of the Pinhoti Trail with Terry. He's back there somewhere. And uh, a couple of good friends of ours. Um, and yeah, for those of you who don't know, the Pinhoti Trail is uh it's in alabama in georgia it's about 350 miles long i think this year it's 348 miles and that's according to the tag that we got at the beginning but uh yeah it starts in like silicaga area of alabama and then goes up into georgia hooks up with the Benton McKay, and then eventually connects with the AT. So, I know there were talks at one point of connecting the Florida Trail to the Pinhoti Trail, and eventually, you know, making it a super long trail. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so actually tomorrow, the 24th of October, is four months to the day that I finished my Appalachian Trail through hike. I summered it on June 24th. So, yeah, four months. And so the last time you saw me, I was hanging up on a rock pile at the summit of Mount Katahdin with the rest of the circus. We got up there about 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning to the summit of Katahdin. And it was really cold that morning. And we just hung up there for a couple of hours, just taking it all in. You know, it's kind of sad that it was, you know, the last time that, uh, you know, we were all going to be together on the trail, you know, as far as the blind circus went. You know, happy and sad, but they would stay up there for a while, and um, Pooh Bear's family was going to hike up there and and meet us, and uh, Smiles' parents were going to hike up and meet us, and uh, well, they were taking a little bit longer than expected to get to the top, so I... Unfortunately, I just couldn't wait it out anymore, and I decided I was going to go down. So I, uh, I took the saddle route, went back down to the parking lot, and just kind of hung out and waited for the rest of the gang to show up. And uh, everyone got down. It was probably, I don't know, 3 o'clock or something in the afternoon, 4 o'clock maybe. By the time everybody got back down and then uh, jumped into the cars and went back to Bangor or close to Bangor where uh, Pooh Bear lives. And then we uh, planned to meet the next day for a, you know, a little barbecue get together at, at Pooh Bear's house. And so I went back to the hotel. Terry was actually, she flew into Maine that day into Bangor and waited at a brewery for me to get off that mountain. So we met at the hotel, and then first thing I did was shave that wretched beard off, and I went and got a haircut, and then, uh, yeah, it felt so good to get all that hair off my face. And then next day, we went over to Pooh Bear's, and we had a feast and uh his family put together a real nice meal and had a little party um terry designed these patches for us that made the at logo into like a circus tent a little flag on the top and and you know it says flying circus on it and it was really neat so she kind of passed those all out and Miles' family. His parents made us some t-shirts. 
that had, you know, Flying Circus and Appalachian Trail on the front and on the back. Had our trail names and printed on there. And then, uh, uh Two Bears parents had some flags made for us that we all signed and passed out to each other. Yeah, and then we just hung out and reminisced a little bit. And then night was over and we went, you know, all in our separate ways and everyone flew back to their respective hometowns, got back into normal life. And, and so we all kind of keep in, in touch on a group text, so yeah, they're all doing great. So anyway, all right, this is a super dry section of the Penhody that we're on. So Nathan and Kim, who own the uh, Penhody Outdoor Center Hostel, they um, leave this water cache here for the hikers. It's really, really super nice of them. All right, so we made it to camp. Um, it's not much of a camp. It's, uh, the camping here on this Pinhoti so far is non-existent. This is basically just a flattened out area, but, uh, um, it says in Gut Hook that it's a campsite, so, well, actually Gut Hook has changed now. It's far out, but I keep, I keep calling it Gut Hook. But, um, so anyway, let's go over some of the things that I have out already, um, because the things that I have with me, uh worked for me so because I'm, con I'm continuing to use them so let me uh switch this camera around all right so i'll start with the big three and uh so tent this big agnes tiger wall two platinum with, with terry behind it reading a book uh that thing is awesome i mean are you talking about me yes I'm talking about you <laughs> <laughs> both those things are awesome uh, no so the tent it was perfect it it did what it was supposed to do i was dry constantly it's very durable didn't uh have any issues with it i changed out the stakes from the stakes that it came with to the uh the groundhogs but that's the only different that's the only thing i did differently and uh love that tent i would highly recommend it um for my sleeping pad, I started out with the, um, I don't have it with me in here, but um, the Thermarest NeoAir X-Lite. And um, so that worked real well in the, in the cold in the beginning. But uh, when I got to West Virginia, I swapped that out for the Thermarest Uberlite. That's what I have in here right now. And um, that thing is really light, works great. I like it a lot. I also went with the Enlightened Equipment. It's going to be a nice sunset here tonight. But I went with the Enlightened Equipment 20 degree 850 down fill Enigma quilt. And that was awesome. I used it through the whole trip. Um, I didn't send it home. I kept it all the way through. And when it got hot or a little warm, too warm for that, I used the, uh, the sleeping bag liner for that. And right now in here... Um, I didn't bring that with me because it's way not warm enough. I mean cold enough. I've got this down blanket that I bought off of Amazon. It's uh, probably a Bobo brand, but it worked great for me last night. It kept me nice and warm. And uh, that's, I think, going to be my go-to for, for uh, spring and fall camping. Um, Oh, my pillow. I went with the Trekology pillow. If you guys watched my my through hike video of the AT, you'll notice that it started out green, but it ended up brown. This is pretty nasty. But this Trekology comes with this strap here so that you can uh, attach it to the sleeping pad and it doesn't go flying all around. There's the Uberlite. It's a great sleeping pad. Um, so yeah, real happy with the Trekology pillow and over to my backpack uh, got the 55 liter z-pax arc blast and well it did what it was supposed to do it got me all the way to the end with no problems 
except uh, here on the back, this thing is supposed to arc here. Um, that's why it's called the arc blast, and it's supposed to, you know, arc so that it uh, allows air throw airflow between your back and the pack. Well, the system, the mesh webbing that goes right here, uh, broke, so it doesn't arc anymore. But yeah, I found it more comfortable um, with it not arcing, but. Yeah, I guess I'm I guess I'm okay with the pack. Um, I probably wouldn't buy another one. I might go with uh, Hyperlite next time if there is a next time. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, so I'm okay. I'm okay with the pack. Um, the uh, puffy. Well, I'll, go, I'll just go here with the puffy. It's in the back of the mesh pocket i went with the uh, enlightened equipment uh torrid apex puffy this is a size medium um i am uh i normally wear large t-shirts and shirts and stuff but um you know i'm five foot eleven about 185 pounds and that is perfect size for me it's great um yeah i would i would recommend the the horrid puppy um z packs bear bag worked perfectly uh real lightweight c knock that's the three liter bag i went with the two liter on my through hike and it actually sprung a leak finally on the last day when we were summoning katahdin but um worked awesome for me this is the three liter just because it's for terry and myself um and i also have uh, find it. Went with the Sawyer Squeeze uh, water filter. Um, it was great. I did have to buy another. I had to buy one in Asheville when I got there because mine froze in the Smokies. The one that I brought originally froze in the Smokies, so I had to get a new one. Um, Tokes Titanium 750 pot. Awesome. And I went with the BRS uh, Titanium stove. And there's a lot of mixed reviews about this, but I had a really positive experience with that. I highly recommend that one. It's only like 15 or 17 bucks or something on Amazon. And I also got the lid with the pot. Um, anyway, that's all I have. It's out right now. Uh, what have I got in here? Oh, the, uh, of course, the, the Deuce of Spades. Um, for your toilet tube kit, you gotta have one of those. And uh, so my rain pants, I think these are the Z Packs uh, rain pants, and uh, they worked fine. I used them more for wind and cold weather, but they were fine. And uh, I've got a bug net in here, just in case. It's not very buggy, but I brought it anyway. Uh, I've got a little pack towel, which I hardly ever used this. I mean, but it's so light. I don't know. I, I don't know if I'd bring it again. I'm not sure. Uh, and my ditty bag, which is just odds and ends, patch kits, which I sprung a leak in this thing today and I had to use the patch kit. So um, first time I ever used a patch kit out of the ditty bag. I didn't use it once on the through hike, but I had to use it today. Um, so I got some band-aids and some uh, replacement o-rings for my stove and for my water filter and just you know a little pocket knife oh the uh pocket knife i got the swiss army knife with the the, the uh nail trimmers in them and that is a must-have because of course you get to clip your nails out there and start getting long and then they bunch up in the front of your shoe cause all kinds of problems and number one thing is the Z seat thermo rest. That's a game changer. You need one of those for sure. Um, I use that multiple times every single day for 127 days. That is the that's my number one piece of gear. Um, over here, my trekking poles got the uh, the black diamond carbon corks, and those things are perfect. 
no problems. I had to replace the tips a couple of times because um, they would, you know, break eventually. But the, uh, yeah, the strike and poles are, are, are perfect. And that's the, uh, the Z-Packs pack liner um, that I've got just to go in the pack. I, you can use a garbage bag or a, people use a trash compactor bag. I just went ahead and bought the the, the bag liner from Z-Packs. And yeah, that's about it. All right, so what I didn't end up liking was that umbrella. It caught more trees and and uh, got hung up on things way more than you know it was just more of a hindrance than than anything useful and so i sent that home with terry on one of her visits um but everything else if you watched my what's in my pack video pretty much everything in there was was spot on for me i think i did the right research for me um, except for gloves. Don't chintz on the gloves. Get a good pair of warm gloves if you're going to go in the winter because I really screwed myself with gloves. I tried to save weight. I tried to do all kinds of hokey stuff and just get a good pair of gloves and uh, your hands will thank you for it. Oh, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Terry's laughing at me. Uh, it is October 24th. Ow, oh, prickers. That hurt. Yeah, October 24th, it's Sunday. And uh, it's day two out here on the Pinhoti Trail. Um, thought I'd go over some of the apparel that I had worn on the uh, AT through hike. I didn't really go over that yesterday. So anyway, I'll start down on, with my footwear. I, I, I talked about Ultra and I love Ultra. And uh, I, uh, I went through about, I went through five pair and uh, finished on my, with my sixth pair. Um, they seem to, wear down pretty quick i probably could have gotten more miles out of each pair but you know i i don't know i saw they were wearing down i'd get a new pair it's most people didn't use that many pairs of shoes i think the average was about three two or three um but i don't know i went through five my socks you know, I started out with spider webs all over my face. Um, with uh, right sock, which is what I wear when I run. I really like that sock. And they had a hiking model. So I, I thought that would be good. So I went with the hiking model. But turns out darn tufts are actually a better sock for me. So I switched to the Darn Tough in probably North Carolina somewhere. And that's what I stuck with the remainder of the trip. And I went through about three pairs of Darn Tufts. They, uh, they have a, an exchange policy at most outfitters. So you just bring your old pair in, they'll give you a new pair. And so that worked out pretty well. Um, my shorts and underwear i started off with nike pro boxer briefs and nike running shorts and by the time i got out of the smokies which is i don't know 230 miles or something like that i had already went through two pairs of underwear and two pairs of shorts i just burned the crotch right out of them i don't know why that is but when i got to Asheville, so that rei um I switched to a brand of shorts called Viore, which I hadn't heard of before, but apparently they're a popular sports apparel brand. Um, uh, yeah, Viore shorts, and then I went with the Ex Officio 
boxer briefs and went 1900 miles in those shorts and that one pair of underwear so yeah those were game changers and you know for me it worked out real well and that shirt i had on that green shirt that you're probably sick of looking at and i was sick of wearing that was just a patagonia shirt that i got at a race the race shirt i got it in the race packet and that was i mean great no holes and that was my you know daily hiking kit and then to sleep i had the uh smart wolf 450 bottoms and top and loved those and then of course um my melly with melons on a micro grid and that thing is just awesome i can't say enough about that i love it i still wear it it i wore that pretty much every day in the mornings because it was a little chilly and then i usually put it on it in the evenings when i got to camp so i wore the crap out of that thing all the way the whole way and it's in perfect condition and if you can get your hands on one i would recommend it so i think that's about it i can't think of anything else that i wore oh my rain gear started out with uh frog togs uh lightweight or ultra light rain jacket and pants and no not the pants sorry i didn't go with the pants i had a z-pax rain kilt for the for my bottoms which i like those i like the kilt it worked out um but the the frog talk jacket was pretty uh wimpy um got cut on every single thorn you walk by so i switched over to the the helium 2 and the helium 2 was great for wind but if it rained that thing got so it wetted out in five minutes it was i was soaked to the bone so i put that thing right in the dumpster but uh yeah that's pretty much what i wore of course i brought a buff um the buff is pretty handy but again i'll emphasize the gloves you've got to get yourself a good pair of gloves um don't try to save weight on the gloves but all right so we got about 10 miles today easy day this is uh really a nice hike so far and uh yeah day two on the pin hody all right all right good morning everybody it's uh october the 26th uh, terry and i made it back to florida we had a great time on the pin hody trail it was really nice to um you know, hike with our good friends, uh, Tim and Debbie. Um, I was pretty impressed with the Ben Hody. I like that one. Uh, here's my registered hiker tag, uh, number 33. Um, I think, you know, with it being only 350 miles, that might be the next through hike. I don't know, possibly. Um, if I average 20 miles or so a day, which... I pretty much did on the AT. That would give me your, you know, 16, 17 days I could do the Pinhoti in. So that's very doable. Uh, maybe in the spring. I don't know, but I, yeah, I enjoyed it out there. It was nice. Nice hiking. Um, but uh, yeah, so I know I went through all that gear pretty quick and I wasn't really thorough or in-depth at all so again if you guys have any questions you know specific questions about any kind of gear that I used or didn't use just put it in the comments and I'm going to do my best to answer everything that I can uh, and yeah so hopefully um, I can answer all those for you but all right so I'm going to go ahead and sign off and I uh, appreciate every, everybody watching and, and especially those people who, you know, watched me through my AT through hike. I really, really appreciate all the support. 
And uh, all right, so maybe you guys will see me again on the Pinhoti. I don't know, we'll see.